In this video, I shoot underwater portraits without getting my feet wet in another secret portrait challenge. Hello, I'm Gavin Howey, and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that's got everything for us photographers. And today, I'm taking on another secret portrait challenge. So I've got absolutely no idea what's going to happen. All I know is that Sam has made me drive four hours to a farm in the middle of nowhere in the pouring rain and something interesting is happening inside of a barn over there. So let's go inside and see what's going on. I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> this is crazy. Okay, let's go. <laughs> so this is the big surprise. Uh, Sam has booked Tank Space, which is a company that has its own mermaid tank, handmade, especially for the job. It's lovely and warm as well, which is just incredible. So I've got this space to photograph in. It's been designed for photography in mind because around the sides are two little holes where I can actually put some lights. So the lighting in here, I guess, well, I can't light from the front, because if I light from the front, all we're going to see is a big flare from the, the Perspex here. So it's going to have to be side lighting and maybe top lighting as well. So I might be able to get something above, but um, I've never lit anything like this. I've got absolutely no idea how this is going to work. So this should be a bit of a challenge, but I guess that's the whole purpose. I think the first thing to do is set the lights up and let's go from there. So I think for the lighting, I'm going to go with flash as my go-to lighting source. Definitely the brightest ones I bought, and I bought the Explore 600s. So that was a, that was a good call. Uh, as far as it goes, I, I'm not sure I want to use the little holes. I think maybe I'd like more sort of light coming from above as my, as my first effort. It, it may feel more natural. It may not work with the direction of light. I don't know, but I've got to start somewhere. So let's start there. I've got one set up on one side. I'm going to add the other side in as well. I'm going to put them onto different groups so I can individually control them. I can switch it on and off. And really importantly, I'm going to turn the modeling light on because, well, I think it's going to get pretty dark. So let's pop that up there somewhere. I, don't know, I honestly don't know. Uh, so to help me out today, we've got the awesome L who's going to be in the tank modeling for us. There really isn't anything I can do until she's in there. So I think, Elle, if you're ready, if you want to get in the tank and I will take some test pictures and we'll see where we go. This is going to be exciting. I should get a camera, really. <laughs> That'd be a good idea. Annoyingly, I made a right mess. I've made a mistake already. I put B on that side and A on that side. So that's really confusing me. So that's B, I'll put B on and we'll just test B, I'm going to guess, eighth power, one eighth power. Let's try that. I can actually see Sam reflected in the Perspex. She's monitoring the video cameras, but I'm exposing for flash, so she won't appear in the final photos. All right, let's see how we're doing. Um, wow. Well, I think we're done there. That's perfect. <laughs> so Elle, you, you can't hear anything in there and you can't see me. So I'm going to leave this to you for a, a couple of goes. So if we can have a couple of goes with you just milling around in the tank whilst I figure out how the lights are going to work. It's okay until she moves around, of course, and then the light comes in from the yeah. wrong direction. How do you do looking? Do you just kind of vaguely know where? Give me direction okay. I can follow it. Okay. So we're going to go with that as your light source. So that is going to be your light direction. So I know it's, it's very difficult, but if you can, yeah, if you can try and be facing in that kind of direction, we'll give that a whirl. Okay, that's impressive. It's really hard light. There's no softness to this light at all. I do have some soft boxes I could put on, but if I'm trying to simulate real light, then that looks pretty good. So what I've done is I've switched out from a standard reflector to a very small softbox. That's going to do two things. First of all, it's going to give slightly softer shadows, hopefully, but also it's going to eat up a lot more light. So I may need to adjust my settings. I'm at one eighth power at the moment. That still gives me plenty of headroom. I can still change this up to maybe 
a quarter power and maybe just bump my ISO up slightly as well to compensate because I'm still at I'm still at 200 ISO actually I'm still really low let's try 400 ISO and I remember you saying there was a bit of fabric should we throw a bit of fabric yes. in as well So I'm using face auto detect just to try and make sure I focus on her face because there are a few bubbles on the tank, which is inevitable. Um, but I actually think that adds to the, the feeling in here. It looks really good. Let's move the light slightly. So what I've done is I've moved the light so it's actually going to come through one of the little portholes on the side. Those little portholes down there are effectively the size of the light. So it is a really small directional light source. So Elle's got changed, she has multiple outfits apparently, and now we have a mermaid. So she's now in the tank as a mermaid. When it comes to lighting, to give myself a bit of flexibility, I'm hoping that I can make use of the inverse square law, which basically means if I get the light further away, then as Elle moves around, the difference in exposure won't be so apparent. So I did pack my really, really tall light stand. So I'm gonna try that. It's way out the video, but it is about 20 feet high, I think, this stand. It's a crazy high light stand. Uh, so if you can be facing towards that light there. Okay, so everything is in that direction. Yeah, that's much better. That's giving me really even exposure, top to bottom, much less hot spots. Yes, it's hard. Yes, it's very shadowy in places, but I think that looks very natural, as natural as you can be in a, a tank. So look at with the, the tail flipping. I don't know if, whether you can sort of swim across. Is that something that can that actually... Towards that side. With, towards that side. Yeah, you got, you've got this, yeah. Great, can we do it again? Now, even whilst I'm taking the pictures, I'm thinking ahead a little bit about the post-processing. Hopefully there won't be much, and I'm honestly not expecting to do anything more than a bit of cloning. Things like scratches on the Perspex, they're kind of inevitable. It's all part and parcel of this setup. Random stray bubbles, odd hairs, that kind of thing. Most of my time is probably gonna be spent doing the floor and the back wall because there's an obvious line that I can see that says this is taken in a tank. And if I can just hide that, just sort of smudge the two together with a bit of cloning or healing, then I think that will make these photos look a lot more convincing. Although as I say that, I just remembered I've actually photographed a mermaid, which is a mythical creature. Well, there we go. That is my time up here at Tank Space. It was a fantastic shoot. I've never done anything like it. And yet it was really straightforward with a fantastic model, great staff here and the lighting. Well, that just seemed to work really well as well. So I'm really pleased with these results. 
Now, if you've got any questions or you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave me a comment below. Click on the bell icon to get regular notifications of all the brand new videos on Adorama TV. And of course, click on that subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching.